And in just a second here, we will go live as we promised. Um, and yeah, um, uh, Alexis, obviously our audiences, agents, originators, people that um, have to sell direct to the consumer. Uh, we do get a lot of consumer viewership, so do keep that in mind. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's just uh, have a conversation as it were. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, I like wrote some notes down and then I forgot my notebook at home. <laughs> so I was like, we're winging it. How's your memory? Pretty good. Okay. I, mean, I do it every day, so I hope I, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Cool. Good morning, Facebook, and all of the other channels that uh, catch this uh, after we're not live any longer. But uh, I'm Adam Smith with the Core Finance Group. With me, as always, is our marketing director, Kelly Dingens. And this week's guest is local real estate agent Alexis Bergelt. I assume I'm pronouncing that correctly. Correct. And actually, uh, my understanding is that you are recently betrothed, um, mm -hmm. that uh, you guys are getting married in the not too distant future, you and Spencer, I believe it is? We are. So are you we going are. to be Alexis Shoup? Heck yeah. Cool. I'm over telling people how to spell my last name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one will be uh, significantly easier you that like way, no song. question. If you like the song, that's all I got to go. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Um, so for those of you watching, uh, you guys have probably gotten used to this after however many uh, episodes we've done of this, that we will typically always have a real estate agent or loan originator as a guest. And we certainly want to talk to our audience first and foremost, which is more loan originators and more real estate agents and talk about business and uh, things we like, things we don't, particularly things circumnavigating around lead generation. We certainly want Alexis to have her opportunity to tell us about her business, who she likes to work with, uh, so on and so forth. But um, outside of the notes that you've got regarding our conversation, Alexis, um, I want to turn the clock back a little bit because, well, one, uh, compared to me, everybody is young, but compared to me, you're relatively young, uh, mm -hmm. certainly compared to the average real estate agent. Correct. And prior to that, you've pretty much always done sales, whether yeah. it's um, uh, high-end watches and jewelry or even as far back as Victoria's Secret, but I think it was Victoria's Secret, but you've oh, got yeah. a really yeah. solid handle <laughs> on sales to the consumer and have for a long, long time considering how young you are. Um, why don't you right. give us a little bit, uh, well, tell us uh, about who you are, where you're at, and give us a little bit of background about what brought you into real estate. Yeah. So I have a big sales background. My family's in sales. Um, a lot of people say that they're the first one in their family to get out of the corporate world. Um, for me, it's kind of the opposite is if I was to go into corporate world, I would have been the first one. Um, so that's a little bit different um, on a scale from, you know, the, the people that kind of are in the corporate atmosphere as well. But um, my grandparents are home builders. My dad's a real estate broker in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm licensed there as well. Um, and my mom's an interior designer and owns her own retail store. So I grew up in the business and surrounding the business. Um, I got a degree in journalism from Arizona State University. I was like, I'm not going to be a realtor. I'm not going to be in real estate. I grew up in it. I ain't doing it. Here I am. <laughs> and here you are. Um, yeah, do you, I love it. Do you spend a lot of time in Arizona? Um, I do. Yeah. Um, I am licensed there. Um, my dad owns his own company there. So I do a lot of high end luxury um, deals there in helping um, all the way from second second home people to um, first home first homes all the way up into luxury when they're um, a lot older. So I've been in the business pretty much my whole life. Um, but it was a big feat for me to 
uh, move here and jump off on my own because I had grown up in the family business. So I basically had to completely start over from scratch um, in Colorado in order to build my business here. So I've been able to um, see it from the ground up and see it as a family business and then be able to do it again myself um, from the ground up in Colorado as well. Okay. And why Colorado? How did you end up here? So my sister's an attorney here. She's a partner at a law firm downtown and um, I love my parents, <laughs> but I wanted to create my own thing. And the only way to do that and not be in the family business and kind of still be in the same industry is to move. Um, so I wanted to move to Colorado because I loved the weather, the people, um, the atmosphere, um, how young it was. And I kind of saw an opportunity. It was about five years ago. So right before um, marijuana got legalized. People say, did you move there for that? No, but <laughs> I saw an opportunity for growth here and saw it, you know, right before it started really booming um, and figured it would be a great opportunity to kind of start in that area right before it, it kind of took off, um, especially for people in my age group. And it's not 120 degrees in the summer. Correct. Also, awesome. so yeah, I'll be a snowbird eventually, but <laughs> I'm sure not yeah. a that makes sense, especially with those ties to that community. Um, yes. And are you doing much in the way of your real estate practice in Arizona? Um, I more so help out my um, dad when he has bigger deals happen in the luxury um, area. It, it's just a lot more time consuming and stuff. So I do a lot more there. Um, but I bet mostly like 80% of my real estate um, is here um, in, in Colorado. And I think you just mentioned it, but tell us again how long you've been practicing in Colorado. Uh, a little over three years. A little over three years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And tell us about your 2018. Um, how did that look? What did you really focus on when it came to clients, yeah. to audience, to lead generation, to maybe advertising and marketing? Um, tell us how your... Right business plan, an outline of what your business plan for 2018 looked like and how that brought you success last year. Right. So um, last year was really the first time that I kind of honed in on exactly what I wanted. Um, they say a lot in real estate classes and lo loan classes and things like that. It was all about survival. Um, so when you kind of finally get a little bit on your feet, then that's where you're able to really put your goals to <laughs> to fruition and actually see it going somewhere. So last year in 2018 was definitely that. I could quadrupled my business um, at year's end, which was amazing. Um, but I was super strict on myself, on, on my organization and what I did to accumulate clients. And I was very consistent. Um, in my office, I'm known as the one who's always there. <laughs> So um, I'm always there nine to noon in my seat doing the things I need to do. Um, I do practice part of the ninja mentality of relationship building and stuff like that. Um, I kind of tailor it to what I want to do in that ninja, but um, that would be the easiest way to explain it to the crowd, to, to crowds and to people that I'm mentoring and teaching as well um, to take that and then make it your own, depending on, you know, how you do things. Um, but uh, I added, uh, two things every six months, um, as well as doing my everyday things. Um, those two big things were my newsletter um, and making sure that those were, um, it was appealing to people. It wasn't just a newsletter. Um, and then my open houses and open houses were amazing. I hear so much about it. And I personally grew up doing open houses and hated them absolutely hated them because I was in a luxury house in a gated community with, you know, and this was, you know, a long time ago. So there wasn't social media and there wasn't those aspects to get the word out there. And um, it wasn't a booming market. So it was dead. Um, and so last year they said, Hey, well, why don't you add that in? And I said, no, thank you. <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't know. They were like, I bet you, you can't do it. And I said, you know what? I will do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, and I came out nine for the nine clients out of the four open houses I did last year. <laughs> so my rate is uh, incredible for that. So um, I would suggest for agents to do open houses, especially if you're newer um, or especially if you're trying to make more relationships happen. Um, I always say, don't go in there thinking you're going to get clients go in there for our goal. And my goal was to make a Facebook live video for the open house. And that was my goal. If I obtained that goal, then awesome. Um, so I made it and put the pressure off of it. And that's why I think I also 
got lucky with some of the clients I did, but I was also strategic on what open houses I picked, what the price points were, where the traffic would be, what you know time of year it was, et cetera. So. Okay, that's huge. And don't get me wrong, normally we would have an agent come up with one or two really good things that they had done in the past that fall right in line with what we teach our coaching clients and uh, our the elite secret sauce group. Steve, I see you watching. Um, and I want to reiterate some of those because for you it's organic, but for our audience there be, might be some things that they didn't quite pick up on. Um, the okay. first one that you mentioned is being consistent. And we've yeah. even done this in a recent uh, video blog. We've got a, a weekly blog for agents, just a quick tip. You guys can get that through our text code at the bottom of the screen. But whatever it is you're going to do, be consistent and constant about it. And that obviously has paid dividends for Alexis. So for you guys that are listening, this is a relatively successful agent. She's only been in our market a few years and she knows this, you should too. The other one with that newsletter is that she focused heavily on making sure that the information was good for her audience. Sorry guys, live video. Um, for her audience. So absolutely in everything you're gonna do, your newsletter, your video, and I wanna come back to that, um, whatever it is you're posting, whatever it is you're sending out in the mail, whatever it is you're emailing, make sure that you're considering your audience first, that it's entertaining to them, that it's something they wanna read, they wanna see, they wanna watch, okay? Open houses, um, and Alexis, I love that you brought that up. And yes, the majority of people probably felt like you originally did. Um, and I've done a few for some of our agent partners. And yeah, it's, it's horrible. There have been plenty when it wasn't the market that it is today where I would sit there for four hours by myself not see another soul in a strange house where you don't want to touch anything and you know you don't want to change their channels and those kinds of things. It's absolutely horrible. But for those of you that are watching, Alexis touched on a really important point here. This is a great way to get your face out there, meet people, gain contacts, build your audience. You guys have got to have an audience. You've got to have a contact database, whether it's Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn, email, snail mail, whatever, to do your prospecting and marketing with. This is a great way to build on that. And then one of the greatest things that Alexis mentioned was doing a live video from there. And if you guys aren't watching what we're doing and talking about live video just like this, then you're missing the boat. One, you're talking about something that enables you to get out there, really let people get to know you, who you are, what you look like, how you speak, your tone, your inflection, your sense of humor, what my office looks like, what photo Alexis has on the wall of her conference room, what's outside <laughs> of Kelly's window, those kinds of things, my wardrobe, etc. And live video is probably the single greatest original organic content on social media, and social media loves original and organic content. Now, obviously, the guests on our show, Alexis included, aren't afraid of video, and you guys shouldn't be either. Obviously, that number one excuse about, I don't like the way I look or sound on video is BS, because that's how you sound and look. So also, don't look at it yeah well or don't watch it right you don't have to watch your own videos that's an easy I one. only watch it one time after and then I'm done and I'm not looking at it every but everybody else watches it and tells me how much they like it so that that's what works perfect <laughs> and guys the power of video that whole I'm now marketing I'm now having a conversation with somebody a thousand on one instead of one on one is enormous so please take advantage of that stuff so Alexis that's four ridiculously solid points that hopefully our entire audience is picking up what you're putting down uh, because that is brilliant, brilliant stuff in 2018 and into 2019 marketing and prospecting kind of stuff. All right, so tell us what 2019 is going to look for you. What things are you going to continue to implement? What new things are you going to try? What's going to be that magic third uh, marketing and prospecting tactic or technique that you implement. And I always did think three was the magic number. So right. fill us in on what 2019 looks like for you. Um, so 2019 is, um, I would call 2018 my breakthrough. Um, and 2019 is my building. 
So I'm building upon those things from last year that that have worked for me, um, throwing out the things that didn't work for me, tweaking those things if they're able to be tweaked. Um, and so my building upon, building upon certain clients that I have, building upon past clients that I have, taking care of people is basically my buildable moment. That's my, that's my why. Um, I love people. And so I, and I have many, many friends, I say, I don't have many clients. I have many friends. That's just how it is. So if I take care of my friends and clients, whether they're clients now or clients in the future, um, I think that that is um, going to be my breakthrough. My plan is to build upon that. So meeting more people, putting them in my database and making it less about real estate and more about taking care of people. Um, they're going to buy a house for me if they like me. And that's, and that's great. Um, and, and it, that's, that's what it is in the bread and butter. I mean, I'm going to do my consistency stuff and they're not going to know some of the stuff like real estate wise that I'm doing that like is behind the scenes for them to see, but I'm out there at events. I'm joining boards of things. Um, I am out there as the foodie for everyone. So it's not, they don't know me as the real estate agent, just a real estate agent. They know me as the food critic. So I'm posting on Yelp. I'm posting what um, restaurant week looks like. I'm posting these food lists that I do twice a year and people hang it up in their thing. I don't know why, but there's no food list out there for people based on neighborhood and we are a foodie city. I don't get it, so I created it. Um, so being out there and just taking care of my friends and family and, and uh, meeting new people and adding them into that, that data bank. So um, as long as I'm staying consistent with what happened last year and then building upon that with people um, and relationships and um, things that grow that, then I think that um, if I continue to do that yearly, um, it, the consistency and stay consistent in the business model that I created last year, I think there's no problem to double, triple and, and go from there and then stay consistent, um, where I want to be, uh, in the future in the five, in my five year plan. That's brilliant. Um, and I do, good morning, David. I do see your comment there. Sorry, buddy. We're, uh, in a heated conversation here. Um, I do want to reemphasize for those of you watching that this is a pretty important mentality that we make friends before we make clients. This is very personal stuff. Um, I, I know the last time my clients went to Taco Bell, Alexis <laughs> has to hang out with people who are picturing their kids trick or treating up and down the block of a potential home they're going to buy. These things are very, very personal. We make friends before we make clients. and. I don't have social activities that don't circumnavigate people that are either clients, are leads, or are advocates. Again, somebody that's does done business with me, that's going to do business with me, or that might refer business to me. And after all this time, and my career is a little lengthier than Alexis's, and I'm not going to tell you guys how long because now I'm embarrassed. Um, I feel like the old man this morning. Um, but this is a very, very important piece of the puzzle. Um, you guys have got to understand how big an ordeal this is. People don't drop $500,000 on purchases every day. Odds are it's the biggest acquisition of their life. I don't care if it's a first time buyer in Alabama, Steve, that's a stab, spending $80,000 on a condo or Donald Trump building a new office tower. It's the biggest transaction of their lives. This is somebody you've got to be really close with, somebody you've got to be tight with, um, somebody that, again, we all know, you know, like, and trust. Um, so making friends before you make clients is a very, very big deal. Thank you, Alexis, for and, making that yeah. clear. And piggybacking as, you know, because most people are real estate agents or loan um, originators and stuff like that on here. Um, the biggest thing with that, too, is in what I see every day is when you're working with people you know, like, and trust, they trust you back. But you're also able to navigate um, what their what their style and personality is to be able to navigate how they're going to handle a certain situation in the future. So you're able to tailor that. Are they more intense about the cash and needing number driven, or are they wanting you to just hold their hand? Um, are which, which person is the decision maker in this thing? If, if you don't know the people that you're working with and you just get leads randomly, it's a lot more work on you to have to figure out how, how their style is and how to get the, job done because you don't know how they are and everybody's different. Um, so I say I work, for, I work with my friends more so instead of, you know, a lead generating site and things like that, 
because I know them and I'm able to do the best job for them and feel connected towards it, but also be able to do my best job with them based on their personality type and what and what services them best in a transaction. That's brilliant. Yeah, communication skills are going to be key. Uh, there's no question. Um, along those lines, are you a uh, uh, a believer in the DISC profile system? Yes. Uh, yes. Do you the try, problem, do you try yes. and identify so I, those personality profiles in your clients? Yeah. The only problem I have with that is I, t I take it often or I used to take it often. And like if I was playing with my dog and then I did it, I'd be like super high eye. But if I was like doing my taxes, I'd be like super like I, I'm pretty much a D and an I, which I mean, everybody can figure out if you know a disc assessment, like there, there's no problem there. But I, I, it does kind of relate to kind of at what time you're doing it and it, at, at how you're feeling at the same moment. Um, but my, my more so my thing is is just vibing off of, uh, of of them and how they're coming into the into the type. Like my two clients I have right now, one is just like, well, what if this guy is you know screwing me over? And the other girl's just like, I love the home. So it's like, you know, talking to them about each, each personality type. So to him, I'm like, Hey, here's here, 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 here for her. I'm like, how are you feeling? How's it going? <laughs> you know? And I talk to them separately, even though they're the same on the same transaction and buying the same house. So, um, I just pick up the vibe, but I mean, I've kind of always done that. So I, it's easier for me. It might not, it might be easier for people to kind of cert do the disc assessment and stuff like that. But um, you kind of can't put somebody in one box. It's just all about how they're feeling and at what point they are in their lives too. And, and, yeah, and you I make guess a good point with playing with the dog versus doing your taxes. Yeah. Those, those kinds well, of things do have an impact. It's just like empathy and self and, uh, and self awareness, I think too, that, you know, um, uh, been talking about emotional intelligence lately and kind of asking them this, the questions that will, you know, gauge how they're feeling about it versus putting the sales techniques on them. Sometimes being quiet is, is super helpful. And you learn that in later in life. <laughs> Very true. All right. There is something else I want to backtrack to a little bit. You've obviously mentioned how you're, um, acting as a uh, pseudo foodie of sorts for Denver. And thank you. If it weren't for you doing that, I wouldn't have known Il Postino was going to open two more locations. Yeah, um, so there's right? definitely uh, some <laughs> dividends there. Um, but there is something in that that's inherently more important than merely the foodie aspect and knowing when restaurants are opening new locations and knowing what's going on with 5280 week and so on and so forth. But there's a lot of value in there in being a local expert, having some right. uh, hyper local activity. And I'm assuming you actually live in the city limits I and do, yeah. participate <laughs> mostly in that kind of uh, culture, location, right. uh, so on and so forth. Um, are you seeing results in your connections, in furthering relationships, in building leads, and those kinds of things by having that kind of hyper local expertise? Absolutely. I mean, they expect that I'm an expert in real estate as well and knowing where everything is just based on me being out and about and out there. Um, but I, I constantly will run into people's friends of friends and they'll be like, oh, I look at your stuff all the time. I barely know them. I don't even, and they don't like my stuff, they don't comment on it or anything like that, right? but they know and they go to my uh, pages and they watch my stuff to see when the next restaurant's gonna open. Um, and I've, it's turned into more relationship, more friend building, and then also turned into some referrals um, from those clients or specifically them buying a house. So yeah, I mean, it's just sometimes when you're saying, I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate agent, they're like, great, I know, I'm not buying a house anytime soon. And it's, it's not, it's not like they think you're selling them something. And so I try to get as far away from the sales um, aspect as possible and say, hey, I'm here as a friend for you. And then all of a sudden randomly they'll be like, hey, I saw this condo going up. How much is it? Hey, um, how's it gonna take for me to get in here, right? Or a 24 year old the other day was like, yeah, I'm not buying a house anytime soon, but if my coworker's doing that, blah, blah, blah. No, we're under contract right now. So like, you know, it just, it happens like that. But yeah, being an expert, A, is um, the hyperactivity. They think that I'm everywhere all the time, which I am, um, but it shows that because I'm showing them, you know, that aspect. But in the opposite end, I'm, I'm generating leads and, and people are seeing my stuff that I didn't even know were. 
And in a, in a roundabout sort of way, you've brought up a point that we try to make every week in our live show, every week in our video blog, um, every day with the content we're posting on sales tips, etc., is that the two things you guys all need to focus on, particularly the real estate agents, and Alexis drives this home with the way she described it, is that you've got to let people know two things, who you are and what you do. And the what you do aspect is easy. For you to let people know your audience, whether it's social media or in the mail or having conversations or talking on the phone or doing live video, letting people know that you're a real estate agent is not difficult. And there is no reason to overdo that. People are gonna ask you what you do. People are gonna ask you how's work. That's just psychological stuff that uh, happens in every American adult conversation. You can certainly express that at that time, but the more important piece, the who you are, is what Alexis is driving at here. What are you into? What are you about? Are you a foodie? Do you live in the city? Do you pay attention to what's going on in the restaurant scene? So on and so forth. Find your tribe that way. For Alexis, it's the foodie group. And she's getting all kinds of response from that from people who don't even know who she is. They think they know her. And Brian, yes, I see you watching and thank you uh, for the nice comments. And Brian's one of the big influencers in my work over the last decade where People will do that because of your good social media work, because of your good video work, because of you not constantly driving the fact that you're a real estate agent down people's throats, but focusing on the more important aspect of who you are, what you're into, what you're about, is going to pay those dividends. And people go to Alexis and say, hey, I loved that bit you posted about Il Postino. I'm so glad there's going to be one near me. I go to a conference where it's a bunch of real estate agents and they come and talk to me like they know me. And you know what? They do. They've seen all this video stuff, who I am, what I wear, where I work, on and on. And that kind of thing pays dividends. So for those of you that are looking at this video, that are watching our show, take that to heart legitimately. That kind of activity is so much more important than constantly barraging people with the fact that you're a real estate agent. That's not a difficult point to get across. If anybody has spent any iota of time checking you out, they know, I promise. There's no need to remind them. If you can't do it as an organic thing or it doesn't come easy to you, um, we do teach the one in four rule, one real estate post, one personal post, one post about the city and one article that you found interesting. So post one in four rule, it's a really easy thing to go by, but if you posted three real estate things, get off of it for a little bit. I mean, if you're super busy and you're closing deals, I mean, show them for sure, but add something, add, add something you see, follow 303 Magazine, follow Eater Denver, follow these different places. It's real easy to just click, whoa, love this article, or whoa, love this new restaurant coming in. Just click share, click post, you're done. And, it, and it's an organic thing. And then you're not out there as a real estate agent, you're out there as a mortgage or pushing it in people's faces. You're you're doing it, you're still having fun and doing your job and it, jo your job is your life, um, but they're able to see what you're else you're doing in your life versus just what you do in your work because no one just, all they do is work. And if you do, you're going to get burned out. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Um, and when we're done, when we're off air, I'm going to have a conversation with you about a little more uh, science of social media. Um, yeah. While that rule is fantastic, applicable, and easy to follow, you're at a point in your career and your social media activity where you can be a little more strategic about it, a little more scientific yeah. about it. And I'm going to tell and you, I, I'm going to give you a couple I, of those things when we're done. And I am. We just like to tell people that when they're scared to post something about their real estate, it's either one way or the other. People are either scared to post what they do or they post it too much. It's like very hard to get yeah, in the middle. There's, there, there's no gray area. There's no middle yeah. ground. You're right. Yeah. All right, Kelly, do you have anything that you want to add or ask Alexis about before we uh, wrap this up? No, I think we're good. Alexis, you're killing it. Hey, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, no question. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. Mortgages, uh, uh, marketing, prospecting, um, lead generation, sales activity, all this kind of stuff. And you nailed 
a half a dozen, maybe more of some very important points that we would drill, and I mean drill, into the heads of anybody we're coaching, anybody we're teaching. Um, so for where you're at in such a short period in your career, and again, guys, career, not a job. Alexis knows this. She's putting forth activities yesteryear, this year. They're going to pay dividends for her in 2022 and 2025 and 2030. So pay close attention to that kind of stuff. But yeah, absolutely uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. All right. Um, as we wrap it up, Alexis, we certainly want to make sure that our audience knows um, that what you do uh, we talked a lot about the who you are, but tell us how to find you, social media, phone, email, carrier pigeon, whatever's uh, best for the consumer. But I guarantee there are a ton of them watching, probably some that are in your tribe. And if they want to reach yeah. out to you, how would they do that? Yep. So carrier pigeon works, but I'll <laughs> usually go with Facebook. Um, my... Uh, Handle is just Alexis Bergelt, B E R G E L T. Um, you can get a hold of me um, pretty much through Facebook or my phone number, which is 480 522 9503. That's still an Arizona number, but because I work in both states, I'm still here in Colorado. <laughs> um, and uh, my email is Alexis at selling Denver, milehigh.com. I'm happy to answer any questions you have and be a fellow friend until I'm your real estate agent. Perfect. Well, Alexis, thank you for joining us. That was an absolutely wonderful broadcast, uh, one that I really enjoyed. I'm sure Kelly did too. Uh, it's always fun to hear that uh, the things we're doing uh, are the things that everybody should be doing. We love that reinforcement. Uh, so that's it for this episode of How I Met Your Mortgage. You guys can catch us every week at 1030 Mountain Time. Uh, every Monday, excuse me, at 1030 Mountain Time. If you want more information uh, about us, uh, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can use our text code below, text CORE to 63566, and it'll ping you back all kinds of good information. You guys have a great day. Okay, hang on just a sec here, guys.